Now, as you can imagine, you can really make some pretty drastic changes to the configuration of your computer. And there are many, many, many BIOS settings inside of your computer. It always is useful to have a backup of your BIOS. Whether you are writing down physically the configuration of your BIOS, or you might have a printer attached, you can hit a print screen key when your BIOS is up and send everything off to your computer. Physical machines, since the operating system isn't booted yet, you can't print to your Windows printer. Windows hasn't started yet. You're inside of your BIOS. So getting that backup isn't quite as simple as you might think. If you are planning to make changes to specific settings, Take a moment, grab a sheet of paper, grab a pencil or a pen, and write down what you're changing. If you have run into problems, you need to go back to the previous configuration. You can reference your notes and say, oh, I changed a cache setting to turn on a certain section of memory. Let's go back in and turn that off because I created a problem with that. So this is this challenge of getting the BIOS configuration isn't always very simple. You sometimes have to have a, a different way to get the BIOS config. Sometimes writing it down is your best course of action. Also, don't make any changes to the BIOS unless you absolutely know what you're doing there. You saw when we were going through just that virtual BIOS that there were a lot of settings inside of that that you could run into and really make some drastic changes to the operation of your computer. Be sure to confirm that. Perhaps do a Google search, check with the manufacturer, check with the hardware person, the people made the hardware that has the BIOS settings that you're changing. They'll know what you need to set. And of course, did I mention you needed a backup? Always make sure that you write down or have a way to reference back what those BIOS settings were prior to you making a change. Worst things you can do is go to a computer you've never used before, change a lot of the BIOS configurations. And when you walk away, that system's not running properly. You're going to need to get it back to where it was. Always, always, always have a backup. When we started up our virtual machine, every time you start your physical machine, it goes through a process called POST. POST is power on self-test. The POST process is there to really get the computer into a working state, check and see what pieces of hardware are connected to the machine, uh, what type of CPU is there, are we able to talk to it properly, how much memory is in the system. Let's clear it out and test it, make sure that we're able to access every part of it. Is the video card connected? Are we able to provide output to your monitor? We check all those things. Your computer does all of that before it even gets to starting up the operating system. If it has any problems with those, it will put a message on the screen that says, I can't see the keyboard. I'm not talking to the hard drive. I don't see video. And if it doesn't see video, it obviously can't output any video for you. So it's kind of hard to see what the error might be with video if you have no video. So one of the things that every BIOS does is it provides a set of beeps or a set of codes onto the screen or you'll be able to both see and hear what the problem is. You'll need to reference the BIOS manufacturer's codes to find out what does three beeps, three short beeps, and one long beep mean. And you'll need to reference what the BIOS manufacturer says that means. You don't need to memorize any very specific beep codes or any specific BIOS codes for your CompTIA exam, but you do need to understand that that's what's going on. If you turn on your computer, you see nothing on the screen, and it beeps a few times at you, you need to understand that that is a BIOS beep code, and your next step would be to find out what does that beep code mean. So that is a very useful part of a BIOS as well. It certainly comes in handy if you ever run into problems with your video. Let's see what we can remember about the BIOS that's inside of our system. Our first question is, why does your computer have a battery? We're plugging into the wall after all. But when your computer's off, you need to have some way to maintain the BIOS configuration settings. And the battery that's inside of your computer maintains that. If you find you boot up your computer and the configuration seems to be reset every time you turn your computer on, then it's probably time to swap out that battery. Our next question is, what stores the BIOS software and configuration? There is something inside of your computer where, after all, the BIOS software is just some code, and your configuration is just some data as well. All of that is stored as part of the CMOS, or the Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor. And lastly, what is a common way to back up your BIOS? We've already talked about how important it is to keep your BIOS updated, backed up, to make sure that you know what all the settings are, especially if you make changes. One common way, directly connect a printer and hit the print screen key. Or you can optionally grab a piece of paper and a pen and write down those settings. Very important to have a backup. 
That brings us to the end of this module from CompTIA A plus 22701 section 1.2, where we've looked at mother motherboard components, types, and features. This module specifically on the BIOS, the CMOS, and the firmware. There are many, many more videos on our website. You can see all of those. We've got some great message boards there. We've got many other links on our website to more technical resources. You can view it all and much more at freeaplus.com.